Hello everybody, my name's Paul Tace. In this video, we're going to be looking at the stabilization in DaVinci Resolve in more depth. After my last uh, video, which was how to do a time lapse with the DJI Mavic Mini, I've had some interest from Leeton to say he would like to see a video of more detail on how to use the stabilization effect. So this is what this video is. So what I've got here is I've just opened DaVinci Resolve and I've dropped in my time lapse from my Mavic Mini and I've dropped in another piece of footage which is a bit wobbly. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is make sure that we move out of cut and go into the edit mode. And then once we're into edit mode, first of all, we are going to focus on this piece of footage here, which is the time lapse. So if I bring this back to the beginning of the timeline and press play, we can see this is really jumpy and moving around everywhere. And what we did is we put stabilization on this. So to do that, what we do is we click on the piece of footage we want to stabilize, and then we click on inspector, and then we scroll down to stabilization. Now, if you go to inspector and you go to stabilization and the option is not there, it may be because you've got two pieces of footage selected. You can only use stabilization when you've only got one piece of footage selected. So um, we're gonna select this one again, and there we can see we've got the stabilization option. So we're gonna double click on this, and this is going to bring down the menu. So um, what we can see here is we've got this really wobbly piece of footage and we want to make it less jerky. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have a look at the modes. Now, basically, perspective mode is gonna make the most adjustments. It's gonna adjust the perspective, the tilt, rotation, and just about everything it can. And then if we go down to similarity, it's gonna make less adjustments and then if we go to translation, again, it's going to make even less adjustments to it's just moving it up and down and left and right slightly. Now, the reason for these other two modes is because sometimes if you use perspective mode, it may look a bit strange. So then if you go down to similarity, it may look a bit better. And then your last result, if the other two don't look very good, you try translation. So you should always start off with perspective. And if that doesn't quite work, you should try making your way through the different modes. So I'm going to use perspective for this. And this is currently what the settings are set at. So what I'm going to do now is actually I'm going to skip these two options and we'll come back to these and you'll see why in a minute. But um, if we go to the cropping ratio, this is how much we want to crop into the picture itself. Because obviously if it's going to be moving, we're going to be moving where the edges are. So it's going to need to zoom in on the piece of footage. So with a one to one ratio, we're not actually going to see any difference because we can't crop in or move in on the picture. So the lower this number is, the more we can crop in. So if we put this down to the minimum, this is gonna get us the smoothest possible results. And then smoothness is the other way around. So if we boost this up to one, this is gonna be as smooth as it can be. And then the strength, the strength's gonna be similar to smoothness, but again, it's, this is gonna do with how much the camera moves itself. So if we actually put the strength down to zero, it's not gonna do much at all. And then if we go down to minus one, it'll actually increase the jerkiness of the footage. So um, most of the time we are going to want this set at one. And these settings here are going to give you the maximum amount of smoothness that you can get for your footage. So um, let's stabilize that and see what happens. This can take quite a while to do. It's hot today, so I'm going to turn my fan on while I'm waiting. Okay, so that's done. And if we scroll for the footage now, We can see it looks a lot smoother. You can also see we've got this weird box going around the edge. Now this is where it's cropped into the picture. So um, what we can do is if we tick zoom, that's gonna get rid of that weird edge. So that's what zoom's about. If you have to zoom unclicked, it will show you the edges and how it's been cropped. And most of the time we're gonna want it zoomed. And this will show you exactly what it's done. This is gonna be the maximum amount of smoothness we can get for this shot. Now it is still a bit jerky, and now I actually believe this is gonna be because there's no straight lines or any high contrast areas that are easy for the program to work out. Although it's done a pretty good job of stabilizing it, it's not perfect. So what I'm gonna do later on is go out and find somewhere with some straight lines and something easy to follow and see how well it stabilizes them. So as I've said before, this is gonna be the smoothest way we can get the camera moving. So we've zoomed on, there we go. But depending on the piece of footage, this will change. We'll have a look at another piece of footage in a minute. Now camera lock is to stop the camera moving altogether. 
So the easiest way for me to talk about this is to say that if it's the same as having a camera on a tripod, but with a little movement, you can put camera lock on and it will stop it moving. Now, if we did it with this piece of footage where I'm actually zooming out, it's going to crop in a lot. So if I put camera lock on and then I try stabilizing it now, we'll see that instead of zooming out, we get this weird kind of vertigo effect and it has stabilized the footage, but it's not let the camera move back. If I take camera lock off and I hit stabilize, do it again. We can see again, it's allowed the camera to move. So if I go into the next piece of footage here, which is of uh, this tape here, some of this is really, actually some of this is really, really shaky, that's fine. So I was going through the jungle and I wasn't expecting to see this and I didn't bring a tripod with me and all I managed to do was find this log to shoot this piece of footage on. So I shoot with a 300 millimeter lens, uh, just resting on a log. So obviously this is really shaky. So what I can do now, actually I'm gonna make this a bit shorter still, just so it's quicker to analyze it and stabilize it. So when I scroll through now, we have this. And this is really quite jerky. So I'm gonna put the cropping ratio about 0.7. I'm gonna make it very smooth. And I want it, and I'm gonna put strength on maximum. And then I'm gonna hit camera lock and press stabilize. And if we go through now, we can see we've got a really nice stable piece of footage, which is way better than the first piece. And if I take camera lock off, there's just slight movement in there. So if you have a piece of footage where the cameras have remained in the same place, having camera lock is the best way to go about it. And just to show you what minus one strength does, if we do that for stabilize, we can see it's going crazy and it's, it's not very nice at all. So we uh, we will stay well, well clear of that. So most of the time we're gonna want strength to one, smoothness to one, and then cropping ratio will depend on how shaky the footage is. The more shaky the footage is, now if I click zoom and let us see the borders, we can see there's minimal, we can see there's minimal cropping going on. So it doesn't actually, we can see there's actually minimal cropping going on anyway. So the cropping ratio doesn't matter too much with this one. If I decide to put this up at one and press stabilize, it should be jerking a little bit more. And then we can bring it down and press stabilize. And there we go, we can see even at 0.92, because it's such a small movement in the camera, we don't need the cropping ratio to be too low. So that's a more in-depth look at how to use a stabilization. If you do have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section down below and I'll reply to them when I can. That's it for this video and I hope to see you in the next one.